That was kind of weird. What is up guys? In this video we're going to be going over five neat facts about Python and let's get started immediately with the number one fact which is what Python is and how it was created. So as you may know, Python is an interpreted high level general purpose programming language that was created by Guido Van Rossum and it was first released in 1991. And what actually made Python so special was that Guido went ahead and created this as a hobby project and it was just there to keep him occupied for the week around Christmas. So it's definitely interesting to think that someone out there just thought about, I'm just going to have fun, create this language, and then 30 years later, it becomes one of the most popular and most utilized languages out there. But just to think that all of this was just a hobby project with a name that came from a comedy series is quite insane to think about. But moving on to the second interesting thing about Python. And this is particularly interesting if you are new to Python. If you start in idle, or you even just have a script in PyCharm or anywhere, you can go ahead and type in import this, and even if you do not use this package, if you run the program, you're going to get this nice poem, which is telling you essentially what Python is. Beautiful is better than ugly. Explicit is better than implicit. Simple is better than complex. Complex is better than complicated. Flat is better than nested. Sparse is better than dense. Readability counts. Special cases aren't special enough to break the rules. Although practicality beats purity, errors should never pass silently unless explicitly silenced. In the face of ambiguity, refuse the temptation to guess. There should be one, and preferably only one, obvious way to do it. Although that way may not be obvious at first unless you're Dutch, now is better than ever. Although never is often better than right now. If the implementation is hard to explain, it's a bad idea. If the implementation is easy to explain, it may be a good idea. Namespaces are one honking great idea. Let's do more of those. It's a beautiful poem. It really tells you a lot about what Python is and actually teaches you a bit about the concept of programming by itself. So that's actually something I really enjoyed in the Python language. And now let's move on to the third thing that makes Python so special. In a majority of programming languages, you don't have the concept of storing an infinite or negative infinite variable. But Python decided hey, that's stupid, if someone wants to do that, we should let them do that. So they came up with the concept of the infinite variable. And to create it, all you have to do is type in your variable name as always, and just create a float. And inside the float, you create a string with infinite, just like that. Now, when you go ahead and print and run infinite, you're going to get this printed to the console that says infinite. And if you want it to be a negative infinite, you just go ahead and add a minus there, and when you print it, it's going to print minus infinite to the console. Now there's another package that actually supports this. And if you go ahead and import numpy as nump, you can go ahead and create another infinite variable and we'll call this infinite2 and that's going to equal np.infinite. And you can also make it negative by adding a minus ahead of it. But let's make them both positive and let's go ahead and print infinite2. And as you can see, they both give us the infinite output as an output. And we can even compare these. So we can go ahead and type in print infinite is equal to infinite two. And we're going to get true printed to the console. And we can also use this to check whether a number is more than infinite or less than infinite. So we can say if 10 is more than infinite, print my mind is blown else print 10 is less than infinite. And if we remove actually all of these print statements, we can go ahead and run this program and we're going to get 10 is less than infinite. But if we decide to change infinite to negative infinite, we're going to get my mind is blown because infinite is going to be negatively infinite. So as you can see, my mind is blown because 10 is more than negative infinite. But moving on to a fourth feature in Python that makes this language so special, and that is the ability to add the else clause to a for loop. So if we go ahead and type in for i in range 10, we're going to print hello plus the current iteration. Then we can go ahead and specify else, we're going to print completed. So what the else block does in this situation is 
tell us whether everything in the for loop actually succeeded. So if all the iterations successfully completed, we're going to have this printed as a success message, in other words. So that's just like a small callback to understand whether everything went right in the for loop. So if we actually go ahead and right click and run this now, we're going to get hello printed 10 times plus completed. But if we decide to go ahead and add the break keyword, if you, for example, have something that breaks the loop, you're going to notice that when we run the script, it's going to print hello once, it's going to break, and it's not going to print the else block because they did not successfully iterate through all of the iterations. So that's a cool feature to know about that a lot of people don't. And finally, to end this video, I'm just going to go over another very small detail about Python. Python was created in 1991, while Java was created in 1995. And as you can see, regardless of the age, regardless of Python being an older language, it is still one of the most used languages today, even more than Java. And that just shows that it doesn't really matter how old a language is, it's still going to be relevant in the future if it is a good language. Also, the fact that Python wasn't created by a big company and just some person that had a lot of time on his hands during the winter holidays just makes it so nice to think about what we can create by ourselves. We can literally go ahead and create a language called Melon that's based off melons. And one day you might be surprised to see that 40 years later, melons is going to be the most popular language used for programming and AI and whatever futuristic content there is out there in 40 years from now. So with that being said, never give up on your dreams. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, definitely leave a comment and a like. So I know that this video is doing some good to the community. <clears throat> Otherwise, feel more than free to leave a suggestion for a different video. And as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.